Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Today I'm doing something a little bit different in this video. With the holidays approaching, I thought it would be fun to put together a little gift guide for junk journalers because let's be honest, we can be hard to shop for, especially if you're not one yourself. I mean, I get it. The world of junk journaling can seem a little bit out there if you're not covered in vintage paper and glue all the time, like we are. And I've tried to put together a fantastic list of ideas for you that covers every budget and your time constraints because some of these you do have to go hunting for. And I've tried to do it in a way that makes sense for people who are not in this beautiful, chaotic world of junk journaling. Now, if you're a fellow junk journaler, I hope this video is perfect for you too, because maybe you might find some things on my list that you don't have that you want to get, or it could be a great video for you to pass along to a friend or family member who's been asking for your wish list. So if you watch this and don't see something in my gift list that you love to have, I hope that you'll drop it in the comments so that we can all be inspired by great gift ideas for junk journalers. All right, all of the items in the gift guide here, I've chosen because they are my personal favorites. They might be something that I'm always on the lookout for, or they're things that I would love to receive as a gift myself. All right, anything that I can link to, I will in the bottom, but a lot of these things are vintage treasures that can't just be found in the craft store. You kind of have to go hunting for them. And I hope that that's part of the fun because as a junk journaler, that's what we enjoy doing. We enjoy looking at vintage flea markets and antique stores and even thrift stores to find some of the wonderful things that we end up putting in our books and journals. And lastly, please remember this list is not exhaustive. So I wanted to give you some specific gift ideas that you could find in different places or search for and find relatively easily. But more so, I was hoping to inspire you to find some wonderful gift ideas for the junk journaler in your life. All right, let's dive in. All right, so before I get started on the gift guide, I just wanted to give you a teeny tiny overview of what junk journaling is in case you're not familiar with it. So junk journaling is an art form where you create books and journals made from a variety of supplies. Sometimes the supplies are new, sometimes they're old, but often they look very different from what you might expect a regular book or a journal to look like. So a junk journaler likes to use used envelopes, used stamps, uh, brand new metal findings, all kinds of different things in their bookmaking. And that's kind of what junk journaling is. So you can see here, these are just some of my junk journals that I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what they are. So this was made out of an old book cover that we'll actually talk about when we get into the gift guide, but it has all different kinds of pages in it, pages, places to write, pockets, different kinds of things like that, where you have all sorts of different things throughout the book itself. So this is um, a different kind of journal. This is more of an assembled journal where the whole thing is kind of built. So it's still called a junk journal, but it is very different because it has lots of flaps and hidden pockets all over the place. It has some things that are magnetic in here. <laughs> it has all sorts of things in it. So, and you can see there's lots of different paper. There's different um, textiles that are used in these books. So they're very, um, and each one is different. Uh, that's all I can really say about it. So you can see, you know, I made both of these, but they're both a very different style. We also make junk journals out of things like bingo cards. So this is just a fabric one that has a bunch of little papers in it. I've been using it to do some mixed media in, but you can see I have all kinds of different types of papers, old invoices, book pages, all kinds of things. There's fabric in here. Um, a junk journal can be just about anything that you want it to be. They can have fabric covers. So some of these other ones, this was a, an old book cover that I used for this journal. This was actually all created from fabric. So this one has some snaps in the front, but it's a fabric. So it's, a, it's kind of a soft cover. Now it's not totally soft because I've added in more pockets and um, envelopes and different things like that. But this one, same thing, has lots of different vintage papers, wonderful sounding papers, coffee dyed papers, uh, doilies in here. So a junk journal is a combination of 
wonderful things from the artist's mind to put into this journal to make it um, wonderful to look at, fun to view, fun to go through, find things in as well. So this is just a very high level overview of what junk journaling is. But if you have a junk journaler in your life, there's lots of things that you could give them as gifts. And we're going to go through a bunch of those today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first let's talk about books. <laughs> and there is way too many for me to mention, but I thought I would at least give you some ideas so that when you were out looking around, you would kind of know what a junk journaler is looking for in a book. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is that most of the books that junk journalers like to use are not brand new books. They're older books. So and most of the time they, you know, can't be purchased like on Amazon or, or places like that. So oftentimes these are found in thrift stores or on uh, used bookseller sites and things like that. So the first ones that I wanted to mention are these Reader's Digest books. And as you can see, they have lovely covers and they're not new. Um, most of the newer ones don't even have covers like this. So it's fun to kind of look around and try and find Reader's Digest condensed books that are volumes that have these wonderful decorative covers. And mo a lot of times you can find them in thrift stores. And as you can see, this um, is peeling apart here. You know, so it's not, you know, in great condition, but a, a junk journaler would probably take this apart anyway. And you can see they have like marbled covers. They have, you know, these floral covers. They're just so much fun um, to work with. So I will say, you know, uh, because a junk journaler is going to probably take apart most books, you want to be careful that you're not like getting first edition books that cost um, a gazillion dollars. <laughs> you know, you want to find things that are, you know, in not great condition or um, older, things that, you know, aren't that expensive because we're probably going to take them apart. So I also wanted to mention that these Reader's Digest books sometimes have great pictures and things like that. So I'm just, this is just one example. Um, but, you know, this is, you know, this is a great old picture that, you know, might be used in collage or in one of the inside pages or things like that. So depending on the stories, sometimes you have great um uh, pictures and things to use from these books as well. But the covers are definitely fun. So if you find some of these that are really interesting looking, I would definitely re recommend picking them up as a gift. Okay, some other kind of books that I want to mention that you might find at thrift stores or antique shops or secondhand bookstores and things like that are books with great covers. So I love um, books that have interesting covers. They're not just, you know, plain canvas covers or something like that. Um, this one is great because it's in a different language. I also love that. The pages of this one are also very beautiful because of the same reasons, because of the, I love, you know, the, the different language in this one but i also love the cover i think that's great and then um readers are really fun so old school readers are often very interesting this one has a great cover sometimes they're not they're a little bit plain but i do like the inside of the readers because they usually have some vocabulary in there stories sometimes pictures sometimes even math they have some handwriting in there. So these are just really fun books. I will say that um, they're often a little bit more expensive. So, you know, if that's not in your budget, you, you know, may want to steer clear of these if you find them. Um, this is also another one that just has a wonderful cover. I mean, the spine is missing. It wasn't in great condition, but I was I was grateful to find it because it has a wonderful cover. Like I just love the way it looks and that it's worn and kind of used. So I can't wait to use this in something. So um, this, I don't even know what kind of book this is. I, I don't even, I don't even know. Sometimes I just buy a book based on the cover. So this one's called Living Age. So there you go. Um, I love that book. This is another one with a very interesting cover. I think that would be really fun for a junk journal. It has beautiful decoration and even um, an illustration on the front there. So these are kinds of things that you're going to be looking for when you want to find something for your junk journaler. 
Other kinds of books include things like an atlas. So old atlases are fun because they have great maps, usually great colors and things inside them. Sometimes even some pictures you can see here. So, um, you know, I, I would, it's always nice to have some great illustrations and something with color to put inside your junk journal. Now I'm bringing this one out, The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. This is a specific book that I wanted to mention. It ha doesn't have a great cover. Um, I think these were last printed in the 70s. So um, the original author, so the um, Edith Holden, who actually did this, this was a diary of hers that she kept that has been reproduced and reprinted into these lovely books. But when you look at them, they're just amazing in terms of the illustrations, the writing, um, and everything that she has done. So a lot of junk journalers covet these kinds of books because they're just gorgeous and they make beautiful pages for inside of a journal. So like I said, sometimes you can find these um, at secondhand stores online like thriftbooks.com or ABE Books or different places like that. Um, sometimes you can just walk into a thrift store and find it on the bookshelf. So I'm always on the lookout for these no matter where I get them. And once again, I wouldn't pay a ton of money for this. Um, I think the most that I've ever paid for one of these is maybe $10. So I, but it's a beautiful book and it would be a treasure for a junk journaler to have, especially if they have never had one before. So that's one that I wanted to mention specifically by name because it's one that we're kind of always on the lookout for. And then another type of book that is really fun are old dictionaries. So I love the way old dictionary pages look. Um, I think that they're just so much fun. And this one, because it's an elementary dictionary, it also has some pictures in that, some illustrations. And so whenever I find a kid's dictionary, um, I like to grab it, especially because it has nice um, pictures and things in it. But even a dictionary that doesn't have it, the older they are, like they just have wonderful feel on their pages. You know, these are a little bit slippery. You can tell that they're vintage type pages. A dictionary is wonderful to have. And so I probably wouldn't use this cover per se, but this one has some inside pages that are wonderful to use for different projects. So while you're looking for the covers and different things like that, also open the book up and see what kind of pages might be in there. And if they have something interesting visually, it might be a good book to have. And then the other one that I wanted to mention are music pages. I love putting music music pages in my um, junk journals. So depending on what kind of book you have, um, you know, this one I think came from a church. So, you know, it has more um, religious type music in them. So if you like that, you can put that in. The other one that I mentioned is, or I want to mention is this one. This is a large, a very large book, which I like because the pages can then be folded down into a smaller journal if you wanted to. But this is a treasure, treasury of grand opera. And whenever I find one of these, which I've only ever found two, but um, this one you might be able to find in a secondhand store online, you know, to look up and actually purchase. But this is wonderful for pages. Now I have used a lot of these, so um, you can see it's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> falling apart because I do take apart some of these, but I just love these full pages of um, music that I can take out and put into um, books. And a lot of times they come from, you know, different operas throughout the years. So they do, there are some descriptive um, pages in here as well for the different things. I was going to see if I could maybe find the beginning of this. So, you know, this is Faust by Charles Gond. Gunad. I'm not sure how you say his name. Charles Gunad. Let's go with that. Um, and then, you know, it'll have the information about the opera, but then we'll go into the, the music from it as well. So the, this book is a wonderful book um, if you find it to use as uh, to give as a gift of music there. All right. And last on the books, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that you can um, you might be able to find new. So um, I have gotten some of these like off of Amazon and things like that. This one I did not. This one I got off of Thrift Books, um, but Flower Fairy. So Cecily Mary Barker has several books of fairies that have 
just wonderful illustrations as well. And these I love to use for covers of my journals or, you know, inside my journals when I'm doing something about fairies. And they're just wonderful illustrations. So I found flower fairies, I believe, of the spring and of the winter on Amazon, and they were less than $10. So they are very small books, just so you know, you're aware, they're not gonna be, you know, great big books, but they're just beautiful, and she has wonderful illustrations in here. So I just wanted to kind of show you those in case you were interested in looking for something like that. And then also, there are these Pepin books, and they have several different um, themes, so they have flora, sometimes they have wallpaper, they have 50s different themes um, of different things that you can get. But this is a brand new book and it has really giant <laughs> papers in it. So you could almost use this like for wrapping paper or something like that. So you can see, you can, once you take it out of the book, you could actually open it up and they're, you know, four times the size of this because when you open them up, so these are, you know, all folded pages in here. But I'm just going to show you the back so you can see all of the neat um, designs and things they have in here. So these look like vintage book plate illustrations, which I totally love and most junk journalers love as well. And you can even see, I was just going to maybe try and since those are kind of small, you can see they have wording on them on some of these, which is what a, a vintage book plate would look like. It would actually have, you know, the scientific name maybe, and it would have, you know, different, um, numbers and things to point out the different parts of the whatever the botanical is that it is illustrated um, there. So these are really fun and would definitely make a good gift as well. All right, we're moving on to our next category and this one is going to be all about tools. So we use a lot of different tools when we're making journals and when we're decorating them. And so this is one of the tools that I love and use. Now, of course, once again, as I'm going to say with every category, this is not an exhaustive list. This is most of the things that I use and that I enjoy. Um, my sort of my most favorite things that I think a lot of us junk journalers also enjoy. So this is called a Sizzix Big Shot. So, and you can maybe see it better if I turn it this way. So it has, um, it has this, here, wait, let me turn it this way so I can reach this better. So it has a handle that turns a plate that goes through this, you know, piece here. And basically what this does is it cuts things, but it cuts things in a design. So this is the tool. And then these are the dies that go in this tool. So these are like little book plates. And I was just going to show you how it works real quick. So I have this piece of decorative paper here and I'm going to put it down just so you kind of understand if you are buying one, <laughs> what exactly you might be buying. So I'm just going to kind of put these around on this paper. And then I'm going to add this plate back to the top. And then we're going to put it through the machine. So I'm going to try to line these up so that they're nice and and the cutting happens on these metal pieces so there's nothing under here that would cut you it's the the dies that you put in here these metal pieces that actually do the cutting for you so you put them in between these plates and then you run it through and it does take a little bit of oomph to get it through but not too bad and then when you take it out your papers have been cut into the shape of those metal pieces so you can see here, I have this little label piece and then I have another piece here. Now I'm going to have to probably use something to punch this out so that it'll come out for me. Sometimes they get a little stuck in there. There we go. But you can see now I have these awesome little labels that if I tried to cut out with my, you know, scissors, I would never be able to do that. So even with this one, now there's a lot of little pieces that need to be kind of pushed out of here. But you can see, I would never be able to cut these out with scissors. So die cuts are really fun to add different things to your labels, or I'm sorry, to your journals um, that, you know, you wouldn't really be able to create yourself. So a die cut machine, if your junk journaler doesn't have one, would be a wonderful addition to their tools. 
All right, the next tool that I would recommend is a crocodile. So this is a big crocodile, and I really like this one because you can um, put things further in with something like this. So when you're, and actually it's an eyelet or a, it's a hole punch and an eyelet setter. That's what this tool is. <laughs> so this is what an eyelet is. So you can see these round discs here. This tool will punch the hole. So I punched it in the spine of this book and then it will add this little metal piece and set it in there so that it stays in there. So that's what this tool does. Um, but I like the big one because you can put things further in. So I also have a small one, which I love almost as much but you can only put papers you know in so far in this one so if you're setting an eyelet with this tool it has to be on the edge of a paper where this one you could set it a lot further in if you wanted to so both of these do the same thing this one just allows um, a little bit you know more variety and also i believe that it is a little more bit more heavy duty so when you're punching through things like you could actually punch through um you know maybe eighth of an inch um cardboard you know um chipboard, that kind of thing. So this one will punch through a lot, which is really kind of nice. This one will punch, but it's just not, it's for, you know, materials that are a little bit less sturdy, I guess you should say. So, and then these are the little eyelets that you would get with it. So this one, I don't believe came with eyelets. I had to purchase them, but this one actually comes with a whole set of eyelets. So that's kind of um, what this tool does, and it is a great tool to have if you don't have one. All right, more tools. Um, punches are great tools to have. So there's obviously dozens of kinds, different kinds of shapes and, and different things out there. Um, if you want to go standard, circle punches are great. I love them in all the different sizes that I have. So this is a half inch punch and it goes all the way up. This is one and a half. I think this is one inch. This is two inches. Um, I use them all the time, <laughs> but then you can get different shapes as well. So I love this one because it will actually cut a piece of paper into um, a tag. So I'm just going to show you how that works. So I'm going to just put that in there. Ooh. And then I've got a beautiful tag that I can use for something. So I love all of my punches. Now, this punch I also want to mention as well, because if you wanted to round corners of a paper, this is great. Now, this one does three different, um, I don't know, I guess, angles of rounding. <laughs> so that does a very small round. So I'll kind of show you that one. So it's just a, just a small little one. And then there's, you know, deeper ones as you go around here. So that one's a little bit more rounded. And then this one is the widest round, if that makes sense. Um, so there's different rounds on this one that you can do. Um, I'm not sure if they sell this one anymore, but I will link down below one that you could um, use that would be just as good. So I love punches. Punches are a great thing to have and they're especially if they go on sale, they're not too expensive. All right, more tools. So um, I just did some punches, but this is a punch board. And there's a lot of different punch boards out there that do different things. This one creates tabs. So this is always um, a nice thing to have if you want to create tabs. You can do these by hand, but obviously I find it much easier to use this punch board to do that. There's also punch boards that create envelopes um, and different things. So punch boards are also a really nice tool. It makes things go much fa faster if you have a punch board um, for something. And I also just wanted to mention stamps. So stamps are great to add embellishments to your pages, to make things look vintage, to create labels and things like that. So this, um, this one, the field notes, I absolutely love. I use it all the time. It has great old looking numbers and a little bit illustration, some great labels on here. I use this one a lot. And then also I'm just going to mention this one as well. This one's like, um, I think it's called ledger script. So so it looks like handwriting on old, um, you know, on an old ledger or something like that. So stamps are another um, great tool to have to use in your junk journals.
Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention before I go on to the next tool, I'm not going to bring it over, but if you're looking to go big budget, <laughs> to go all the way with someone, you could get them a sewing machine. So sewing machines I use for so many things inside my journals. So I'm just going to pull out my little idea book here because I want to show you some different things like um, junk journalers would be using a sewing machine for. So when I make tags, I often sew around the outside edges. So having a sewing machine really works great for that. I sew sometimes inside my journals. I like to sew on fabric, on paper, on all those different things. So a sewing machine would be wonderful to have. Um, you don't have to get crazy with a sewing machine. It doesn't have to have top of the line, you know, whatever, things that you can do with it. It can just be a basic sewing machine that does a zigzag stitch, a straight stitch. Um, you know, it doesn't have to have all the embroidery settings on it, although that might be nice. Um, I use my sewing machine for paper, and that's not always recommended <laughs> with sewing machines. So, you know, you might want to not get, you know, a, a, a thousand dollar sewing machine or something like that for a junk journaler, but a good sewing machine is also very helpful um, when you're working on your junk journal. There's so many tools. It is really hard to make sure I'm getting them all, <laughs> but I wanted to mention a few more. So the first thing I want to mention is cutting tools. So having a good paper cutter is really, really nice, especially something that has a straight line. So this is, I think, a Fiskars, and they have lots of different um, sizes of these. Having a good one of these, maybe even some of these replacement blades would be awesome <laughs> to have because I go through these a lot as well. Luckily, they can be replaced. I can keep the base and just replace the blade if I want to. Um, but having a good cutter is really nice. So um, sometimes, you know, getting a new one is wonderful because it, you know, I mean, you can use this thing forever, but it starts to wear out over time. All right. And then the next thing I wanted to mention were in terms of cutting are fussy cutting scissors. Now these I got a while ago. I'm not even sure if they're still available, but having very sharp, small scissors like this helps you to fussy cut. And if you're not familiar with what fussy cutting is, it's when you take a um, picture of something, and of course I don't have something right at the tip of my fingers, but you cut it out in detail. So when we talked about die cutting, we have a machine that can make all these small cuts, but we also have books that we use where we might wanna cut something out. So I'm just gonna, this is a, a sticker, but I'm just gonna use this as an example. So if I wanted to cut out that phonograph, I would just come in here with these scissors and go all around it and make sure I was getting into the nooks and crannies here to cut it out. That's called fussy cutting. And having good fussy cutting scissors is great for doing those things when you want to cut things out of books or things like that when you don't have a die cut for it. So I will link below a good fussy cutting scissors, but I just wanted to mention that having a, a nice pair of these is really great to have around because you can sit at the TV and do some fussy cutting and have embellishments ready to go the next time you're working. All right, next thing I wanna mention is this thing. This is a um, an embossing tool. So I'm not, I lied, it's not an embossing tool. It is a, um, Oh my goodness, I can't think of the word. Okay, you can tell I've been recording too long. <laughs> I could not think of what this thing was called. This is called a scoreboard because it helps you score a piece of paper. So once again, I'm just going to grab some piece of paper that I have here. Let me see if I can find something. So if you have a piece of paper and you want to make a fold, having a scoreboard is really helpful for that. So you can mark it at specific lengths. So I'm going to do one and a half here and you just use a scoring tool. I think this one came with this, but I don't really like using this one. Um, and then you have this nice line that you can fold and make a nice straight line fold on it. So this scoring tool is very nice to have, especially because it has um, the different numbers and things on it as well. This one, now we talked about punch boards. This scoreboard actually has this triangle piece that you can use to make envelopes as well. So this one kind of plays double duty. You can create an envelope with this scoreboard as well as just marking straight lines. So so this is a really nice tool to have if you don't have one of those. Helps you 
make sure you have nice crisp folds. All right, and then the last one of the tools that I have sitting up here is the cinch machine. So this is a specific type of binding machine. So a lot of times we sew in pages into our junk journals. This one actually creates holes. So it's really just all these are holes that are punched. So I can kind of show you what it does. So you put a piece of paper in here and then you punch these holes. So this is what this kind of does. And then it helps you add a ring binding to your book. So that's what this is. So I've punched these holes and I've added a ring binding to this book here. So this is a different type of binding um, that might be nice to have as well. So some people don't do this kind of binding, but I love it. I use it for a lot of different things because it helps, you know, it helps a book stay open flat. Um, and I love that. So that's another tool that you can use. And then one other tool that I want to mention that, you know, you don't think of that often is a cutting mat. So I have this cutting mat. I've had it for a long time. <laughs> you can see that it is pretty beat up. I have, there's paint and all kinds of things all over it. But this is nice because if you're using, say, a craft knife or something on here, it's, you know, uh, self-healing. It's a self-healing mat. And this one has, you know, rulers on it and things which are nice as well as you're doing different things. Um, I keep this under my work in almost everything that I do. So having a, a good cutting mat is also a very nice tool to have in your arsenal of tools. <laughs> Okay, and lastly for tools, I can't go away from tools without just mentioning um, needles and binding materials. So different types of thread and cording are really great to have in your, um, in your toolbox to add signatures, to add pages to your journal and things like that. So I have these three big book binding needles. Um, they are I use them all the time. They are wonderful, but they are very, very sharp, which is why I keep them in this little um, piece of paper here so I don't uh, suture myself. Um, but I use these all the time. There are also book binding needles that are curved like this so that it's um, easy to kind of go around something. So I use these occasionally as well um, to bind things into my book. So there are book binding kits out there that you can get that might be good for, you know, kind of a starter um, kit to have so that you have some needles and th some thread together. And sometimes they even come with an awl, which is kind of like a poking tool, um, which I have right here. So this is, this is my pokey tool and I love this thing. <laughs> so those are some other tools that are great for junk journalers to have. All right, we're gonna move on to our next category, and this category is supplies. <laughs> and I'm gonna first talk about new supplies. So these are things that you can buy brand new um, that junk journalers absolutely love and will definitely use. So the first thing that I wanna mention are napkins. So decorative napkins are so much fun to decoupage on different things that you're working on. And there are so many beautiful napkins out there. So you have things with butterflies. Look at these hummingbirds. They're just beautiful. Regular birds here. And just botanicals, different flowers and things like that. So we love napkins for all kinds of things. So I pulled out um, a stack of napkins that I have because obviously I'm probably never, ever, ever going to use all of these napkins. But if you find some neat decorative napkins, these make a great gift for a junk journaler. And then they will have extra that they could ship off to a friend um, or do a trade with a friend for some different napkins. So having napkins is a wonderful gift for a junk journaler. Another great supply uh, for a junk journaler is washi tape. So I just have this bowl here full of different kinds of washi tape, and there are so many um, different things out there that you can get. So I will link some of the, um, the ones that I enjoy down below, um, but you can see there's like vintage, looks like a vintage kind of ledger there with different numbers on it. There is just decorative ones with different colors, so patterns there. 
Um, I love some of the black and brown ones with different patterns and florals. There's even ones, um, they're, you know, designed by different artists with their artwork on it. So these are really fun to use too, if you're doing a junk journaling page or something like that. I also really love the vintage one. This one's like vintage advertising, which is really fun. And washi tape is just basically tape that is decorated. So, um, when you pull it off, whoops, you can tear it in half like I just did there, even though I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but you have a neat decoration that you can put inside um, your journal or create tags with it or different things like that. So washi tape is really fun to have. Um, and then I just pulled this out too. There are stickers is also a really good one to have. Um, I like stickers that have botanicals on them. These actually look like stamps, um, but they're they're pretty and they're nice to add to different things. This one has more advertisements in it, but stickers are also really fun to have. But the main reason I pulled this out is because I wanted to show you some of this fabric washi tape that is really fun. So this is just basically fabric that is sticky on the inside, um, but it is very durable. It feels nice. It has a great texture to it. So fabric washi is also really nice to have. So most of this is just kind of um, botanical themed here, but this one, whoops, as I try to pull it out, is actually ticket themed. So you can see um, tickets on it, which is really fun. So there's a lot of different washi tapes out there. I like the more vintage looking washi tape, um, but certainly if you know your junk journaler, you can hopefully choose something that they will love. Although I would argue that having a variety of different styles, any junk journaler would love. <laughs> All right, more new supplies that you can find at a lot of different places. Paper doilies are so much fun to cut up and use for different things in your journal. So um, I think these I got at the Dollar Tree. So you can look around and see what they have there, but they are really fun to fold up and use across um, a page or to even create a pocket or something like that. So, and there's different shapes, obviously. You can see here, there's a heart shape. There's different shape doilies and these are just paper. Um, so you usually get a pack of a bunch, which is kind of nice because then you can use them for lots of different projects. So doilies is another great thing for gifts for a junk journaler. Um, okay, the next thing I wanted to mention was envelopes. So these can just be plain envelopes. Um, <laughs> I think I probably got these at Staples, <laughs> but sometimes I will take them and I will coffee dye them or I will um, add distress ink to them to make them look old, crumple them up and different things like that. But envelopes are really nice to have and use in your junk journalers. And then for a more decorative look for envelopes, so these I actually got, and you can tell they're already kind of, you know, um, decorated, but I love the way they have a vintage look to them. Some with, you know, old stamps and um, birds and things on them. But these are really nice to be able to add in or to even add a note if you're sending some mail off and different things like that. But these are fun envelopes that you can get as well. So I will link these down below if you're interested in getting some envelopes. And these, because they're nice and small, would make a really fun little um, stocking stuffer as well. So I'll just put those aside for now. And then bags. So you can get decorative little bags here. And I'm just going to pull out what I have in here. And these I think I got at a craft store. But they make... Um, beautiful additions to journals. You know, you can put things in them. Sometimes we fold them in half and use them as a page in a journal. Um, but you can see there's lots of pretty different designs and things that you can use for bags, as well as the, just these plain glassine bags. So we love taking these bags and making them look old. I don't know if I have one here that I've started. Oh, here's one that's torn but you can add stamps to them. You can coffee dye them. This is my torn one, but I was coffee dyeing some of these and I love the way they crinkle once you do something like that. So there's lots of different options to do with these bags as well. So these glassine bags that I will link down below. All right, I've got more supplies that you can get brand new <laughs> that a junk journaler would love to have. 
And this is um, a little less traditional, but we use these a lot. Um, this is a file folder. So it's a manila file folder, brand new, gotten at Staples once again. <laughs> but these are make great bases for different things that we create, for tags, for um, folios, for pockets, for all kinds of different things. So this, while it may seem like a crazy plain gift or maybe even just a crazy gift, Manila file folders are a wonderful addition to have in your stash uh, for a junk journaler. And then I also wanted to mention Sari Ribbon. So this is silk ribbon that has been torn down and um, is used by junk journalers a lot of times to create um, tag toppers for different things that they do or possibly for creating a tie around your journal when it's complete. There's so many different colors. This is These are skeins of um, different sari ribbon. You can see I have some black here. There's pink here. There's a whole variety of different colors. There's even some sari ribbon that is patterned. So that's really fun too. Sari ribbon would be a wonderful addition to your supplies to have in your stash. More supplies. <laughs> these are really fun. These are actually metal filigree embellishments. And sometimes they're used for jewelry making, but because these are so flat and so intricate, they make wonderful additions to different things that you're creating for junk journaling, for bookmaking. So metal filigree is always really fun. These, um, I have this little book here, but these corner pieces make excellent little embellishments. Um, onto different journals. I just love the look of that. So a junk journaler would love to have some metal filigree embellishments. Also book plates. So these are different um, book plates that you could put on the front of a book and then add words in it. Um, you know, paper words can go behind these, but these are also really fun to have in your stash to add to the front of a journal. And then also, um, I just pulled out a couple of my bulb pins. This is also a really great stocking stuffer, our bulb pins. You can get them in, this is like a, an antique brass color, and this is a uh, black. And these are a lot of times used in sewing for different things, but the junk journaler loves them to add different embellishments to. So you can see here I've added... Um, some fabric and a little tag right here with my bulb pin. And you can even see that I have some, oh no, this isn't sorry. This is just a, just a piece of fabric, but the sorry ribbon that I was talking about, we sometimes add them to the top of a tag to make a little tag topper there. So this is some of the metal findings that you can get. And there's a ton more um, this video is going to get really long if I go through everything, but I love these little um, gears and things. Sometimes this makes a great theme for steampunk um, or industrial theme journals. Um, there's all sorts of things here. Here's some more of the eyelets. These are obviously metal findings that I would use, I would put in with my crocodile if I was doing that. So lots of little flat metal things make a wonderful gift for a junk journaler. All right. We're going to move into vintage supplies. Now, these are things you often can't find brand new, um, but they're so much fun to hunt for. So if you are courageous <laughs> and you want to try to find some interesting gifts for your junk journaler, you can go to, now most of the time, I haven't really found any of these at thrift stores, but antique stores and things like that often have these types of things that I'll be showing you today. So the first one that I want to mention are these pictures. These are called cabinet cards and they are put on, you know, very kind of thick paper because people used to just kind of stand them up. They were made so that they could do that. And there's all kinds of different ones that you can find. So um, most of the time, you know, they're just people posing. And I love how they have different things on the bottom. Sometimes they have very interesting backgrounds. Of course, I didn't pull out any that have anything on the back, but we love to put these into journals and things like that. So cabinet cards are one really fun thing to look for. Um, 
I try not to pay too much for these. So I look for anything from one, two or three dollars, um, especially if it has something interesting on it that I like, then I will purchase it. So those are cabinet cards and they are really fun to have around. Um, then I also wanted to mention buttons. Now, of course, you can get buttons new, but it's also fun sometimes to get vintage buttons. And buttons, um, I mean, they still put them on these button cards like you see here, um, but sometimes it's fun to find these vintage buttons on their vintage button cards just because they are so much fun. They have very interesting illustrations and things like that. So if you see any of these, I would scoop them up if you find them because they're so much fun to have around. And then the next thing is fabrics. So there's all kinds of different vintage fabrics out there that are great to use. So this one, I'm just going to kind of open it up. There's vintage laces um, and we would take these and, you know, cut them up and add them to our pages. Um, you know, make pockets with them. There's all kinds of things to do with vintage laces. So I just pulled out a couple of those. Um, we talked about paper doilies, but there's also, um, you know, crochet doilies and machine doilies and things like that. So let me just kind of show you what I have here. So, you know, these might go on the top of a dresser or something like that. Um, but you know, they're for sale in antique stores. And these are really fun to put into the journals or even make covers from them. So sometimes people will take these and actually make a cover for their journal. And I just think that that makes such a beautiful cover. So keep your eyes out for uh, doilies and crocheted ones as well. And then old handkerchiefs are really fun and old napkins. So some of these I think are napkins and some of them are hankies, but they have sometimes very fun embroidery on them. Um, these were not real expensive. So I believe these are napkins, but then you have hankies like this too that have really fun. Actually, I think that looks like the, the back there that have really fun embroidery on them and fun edging different colors. Obviously this would be a wonderful summer or theme or uh, spring themed um, hanky that you could use in a journal and this is another this is another doily there that has some great stitching on it so things like this are always fun to put in our journals so this is um, another kind of hanky um, that you could put into a journal so always be on the lookout for fabrics and laces and things like that that would make um, an interesting addition and then the next thing I have is so a couple different things so the first one I want to show you are old clock parts now we talked about metal filigree and things like that that you could buy new but sometimes you can find wonderful old clock parts these are hands and there's dials in here and there's um, watch faces and clock faces and all kinds of things these are really fun also once again because they kind of lay flat these make wonderful additions for embellishments and things that we are building in our journals so keep your eyes out for um clock and watch parts. I think these are really fun and they're very inexpensive because they're just parts, you know, nothing is together and things like that. So I love having this as a stash for things to use. And then the next thing that I wanted to mention are stamps. So you can find stamps at antique stores um, and these are all used stamps. Some of them are foreign stamps. A lot of these are foreign stamps, I believe. Um, but these are also really fun. They're almost like stickers, but because they are, you know, authentically vintage, they're really great additions to junk journals. And there's, you know, just a ton of different colors and sizes. You know, you have small square, you have kind of these long rectangles um, and different colors. And then the images on them, of course, are wonderful as well. So always be on the lookout for vintage stamps to go in a journal as well. Once again, these make great stocking stuffers. All right, I have some more vintage supplies that would be fun to have uh, gifted to a junk journaler. Now, before I go through all of these and what they are, I also just wanted to mention that old letters and old photos are really fun to add to um, a gift. So if you can find an old you know, group of photos or something like that, or an old group of letters at an antique store, I think that would make a wonderful gift because we use them all the time um, in our journals. Now, the things that I wanna mention here, let me just kinda 
move things around here. The first one that I want to wanted to mention is any kind of ephemera that you can find in an antique store makes a really fun gift. So these are old um, Valentines. They are little Christmas. These are um, old tags, like gift tags on there. Same with these. So, and these were just in a box in an antique store. And I think they make wonderful additions for um, a junk journal. So if you find any of these kinds of things, I think they're great to have. So some of them I think are um, stickers and there's, you know, just all these different little cards and things. There's some round ones. These are more Christmas tags. These are really, really fun. And since you can't buy them new, you know, they, they're very unique. So always be on the lookout for little pieces of ephemera like that. Now, the next thing I wanted to mention is old games. So sometimes there are old card games that you can find, and these make really great gifts too. So this one I found at a flea market, and there are some cards missing, which is one of the other reasons that I wanted to get it, because I'm not going to be using it as the game of Flinch. Um, I just like using these cards. So when you look at these cards, they are just um, beautifully decorated and so much fun. Um, these make great additions to cards, or I'm sorry, to journals um, so that you can put things in. So if there's interesting old games that you find with different cards and playing pieces and things like that, this is always fun to have um, and add to a stocking. Um, and I also wanted to mention, so there's games, but there's also like vocabulary cards. Now these aren't that old, but they're still really fun. And if you could find older ones, that would be great too. So these um, have these are vocabulary cards. So they have the word, um, they have a sentence on there, they have the definition on there. And like these, because they don't look real old, I might add some coffee dyeing to them to kind of make them look old. But um, I think these are really fun to have. So the vocabulary cards, math flashcards, those kinds of things are always fun to have too. Now these I pulled out, these are old postcards. Now they're not terribly old. They're probably from the 70s, but I found them, actually I got these at an auction, um, but you could find these in thrift stores. You could find these um, in uh, antique stores as well. And I mean, they're, they're not used, so that makes them fun as well. Um, and they are actually, you know, like French. So this one, they have French writing on them, not English, which I love. So Old postcards are always a great thing to have in your stash. I like them because they're, you know, more sturdy than like a photograph or um, other piece of paper, but having some vintage postcards around would be a great addition to your stash. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, at least for <laughs> this set of supplies, vintage supplies, are these piano rolls. So they are awesome, fun looking things. These are I got this one for $1 at an antique store, so I wouldn't, you know, pay a ton of money for them. Um, but I'm gonna open one up for you so you can see. So the old pianos that played on their own, played using these papers inside of them so that they know, you know, which notes to play. But these are um, fun papers to use. They're really thin. They make a great noise, which um, junk journalers always love. But piano rolls are also fun to have for creating things in your journal. All right, as you can see, I could probably go on and on and on <laughs> about all the different things that you could get for supplies uh, for gifts. So I'm going to end with this last category. Um, it's going to be called paper because we love paper in our journals. And my name is Mad Paper Crush because I have a mad paper crush. <laughs> so I wanted to end with paper. But before I go through this last category, I just wanted to say that anytime you're out at a thrift store or an antique shop and you're looking for things, look for things that just have an interesting visual to it, maybe an interesting texture to it, and that can basically lay flat. Obviously, we don't want to, you know, put big chunky things into a book, into a journal that we're making. So if you find things that are flat, those are things that we find interesting. So old newspapers, um, you know, like I said, different kinds of book pages, there's bingo cards, uh, all kinds of different things that you could put in. And I can't even mention them all here, but 
I know that you're smart people, and if you love a junk journaler, you can go out and find some really interesting pieces to add to their collection. All right, so let's talk about paper. So obviously, paper is an amazing thing to have around for a junk journaler. There are traditional types of paper, like this stack that I have here. So this is scrapbooking paper. So people who do scrapbooks often use these types of patterned papers in their scrapbooks. So these are also great for junk journalers because we use papers like this in our journals. So there's all kinds of different themes and patterns and things that you can look at. So I like ones that are vintage looking, as you can see this one is. I also like this one because it's all different kind of patterns. So it's just um, what might be like wallpaper patterns or something like that. I think having these in your books add a lot of visual interest and things like that. So patterned paper is a great thing to have. Um, I have this one, which I love, this tattered and worn one. I believe I got this one at... I want to say it was Hobby Lobby, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But this one, because it's tattered and worn, these papers already look kind of vintage. So they look a little scuffed up and, and things like that, which I love. So this one even has some like distressing on there, some maybe some coffee stains or something like that. So having a stash of papers like this is really nice um, to have. So that's a definite idea if you can't find some of the vintage things that you might want to for your junk journaler. Now, I also just wanted to mention, this is a book, so I didn't put it in the, the book section because we use these kinds of books for paper. So this is an old ledger book. So if you find one of these, you're probably pretty lucky. I think they are kind of hard to find depending on where you are in the country. I think in different places, there seems to be, you know, more of a supply of these, but I love these because of the paper. So pulling these ledger pages out, they're nice and thick. They're lined. You can use them in your journals. They oftentimes have great writing in them. So this has names and things in them. I'm not sure exactly what this was used for. There's lots of numbers and things. And oftentimes, now I don't think in this one is the case, but oftentimes you will find lots of blank pages um, for you to use in your journal. So uh, ledgers make awesome gifts if you can find them. They, like I said, they are often hard to find and sometimes they're very expensive. So, you know, you have to, to weigh that with your budget um, and what the time constraints you have to look around for something like this. The other thing that I want to mention about the ledgers is the beautiful numbered pages. I just love the numbers on these pages. They make them, they're so much fun um, to use for different things and to have them in your journals. So ledger books are a great supply of paper if you can find them and you can find them at your price point. All right, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention are digital papers. So there's a lot of digital designers out there. I am one of those digital designers. So I use digital papers in my journals all the time. So I oftentimes create digital papers of things that I can't often find or that I wouldn't find um, anywhere, you know, regularly. So fantasy type of things. So this is one of the kits that I have. This one's called Lady Lapis. And I have these beautiful pictures of these ladies with awesome hairdos and beautiful jewelry on. And I've collaged them together with old papers, an old, um, this is a catalog page there. So lots of different things that you wouldn't find normally. And because I can't find it, sometimes it's easier for me to create it. So these are cabinet cards with these beautiful ladies on them. I just love the way they look. They're absolutely stunning and so much fun to use in your journals. They're unexpected. Some people don't like to use digitals. I love to use digitals because I think it's fun to find something that you wouldn't necessarily find um, out there in your journal. And I often put these together with things that, you know, uh, true vintage things. So that makes it fun too. So these are little book plates um, that you would find, you know, that you could possibly find. Um, and there's lots of different pages in this. So this is just one kit out of my store, my collection. Um, I also have some cameos in here with the ladies in them. And I love the way they look as well. 
Um, and this one actually has tags that you can cut out, these nice big tags for like a tall journal if you wanted to, to put them in as well. So there's lots of different things you can find in digital kits. This is actually for a journal. So if you were creating a journal, you could use this as your starter pieces. Um, it has a theme going already. It has some botanicals, obviously blues and things like that if you wanted to create a journal that way. And then I also have different kinds of kits where these are just pieces of things that you could fussy cut. So we were talking about fussy cutting things out with our fussy cut scissors. I would use my little scissors to cut these little things out and use them in my journals. Now, obviously they're not, they're on paper, so they're not metal, <laughs> but they look like metal and you can add different embellishments to them to make them more realistic as possibly metal. So this is one that I've just added some beeswax embossing powder to, to kind of give it a metal sheen, an old metal sheen. But these are really fun to use um, in your journals as well. So digital kits are also a really good option for gifts for people. If you're interested in getting a gift card from my shop for the junk journaler in your life, you can message me. Um, you can either message me through email at Sharon at madpapercrush.com or you can leave a message down below and we can chat about how I can get a gift card to you to give to your junk journalers so that they could get some digital pages. All right, I'm wrapping up this gift guide for the junk journaler here. I hope I gave you some great ideas for the junk journaler in your life. I know that I was talking fast. I apologize for that. If you have any questions about the terminologies I was using, any of the terms I used, or any of the products or anything that you saw, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. And once again, anything that I can link to, I will put down in the description um, if you're interested. A lot of this stuff, it's kind of, you just have to go hunting for it. Um, so I won't be able to link those down below. But I hope you enjoyed this vid video. I hope that it gave you some good ideas. And if you're interested in a gift card from my shop, once again, you can contact me at Sharon at madpapercrush.com or you can leave me a comment down below and we can see if we can get you a gift card for your junk journaler. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have wonderful holidays and I hope you have a wonderful time finding gifts for the junk journaler in your life. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.